Previously, we looked at the key parts of MIDI, namely hardware, messaging, and storage. In this video, we are going to explore MIDI sequencing. Sequencing wasn't originally part of MIDI, but the need to record, store, and playback MIDI events became important for musicians, songwriters, and producers. Realizing this importance, the MIDI Manufacturers Association created a file type that allowed MIDI events to be timestamped, recorded, stored, and played back. This is similar to recording sound using analog tape or a digital audio workstation. The main difference being that MIDI sequencing is recording instructions, called events, which determine how to play an instrument, rather than the actual sound of an instrument. In the 1980s, MIDI sequencing was typically done with standalone hardware sequences that recorded the MIDI data onto a floppy disk. They were programmed by a series of buttons and a small LCD display. Realising the potential of this, a number of programmers began to develop software for computers that allowed the home user to easily sequence musical events using MIDI. This would typically involve entering the MIDI data using a keyboard and computer MIDI interface, although a computer keyboard or mouse could also be used. When the sequence was played back, MIDI data would go out from the computer to a sound device or drum machine and play back the musical events. Modern computers use a similar approach to entering MIDI data, although the target instrument is usually a software emulation of a synthesizer, sound module, or drum machine, otherwise known as a virtual instrument. When MIDI data is recorded by a person playing the keyboard or another device, this is referred to as real-time entry. Further adjustments or corrections to the events can be made after the recording. Another option is to use a keyboard to enter the data in non-real-time, otherwise known as step entry. Finally, a popular way of entering MIDI data simply involves using the mouse to pencil or draw events. One of the most common types of MIDI event is the note on and note off message. The note on plays the note, whilst the note off usually ends the note and thus determines the duration of the note. The note on also includes information about which pitch to play and how loud to play that pitch. When entering the data, the MIDI events are displayed and stored on a MIDI track. The track is assigned a MIDI channel from 1 to 16 that determines which sound device or virtual instrument to perform. The data in the track is usually represented in a piano roll editor. A piano roll editor displays a piano keyboard along one axis and time, usually represented as musical bars and beats, along the other axis. The duration of each note event is usually determined by how long the musical keyboard is held, or by note length options in the piano roll editor. Other editors are also available in some sequences. This includes the drum editor and pattern sequencer. Other MIDI events such as pitch, modulation and various instrument controls can also be sequenced. These are done by changing and recording controllers in real time, such as wheels, faders and knobs, or drawing the information using a mouse in non-real time. In our next video, we'll be demonstrating how to use a drum machine and a traditional pre-MIDI step sequencer. You'll be able to create your own drum loop and export it as an audio file.